So how do you find the best stocks for options trading, whether you are buying options or selling options or perhaps doing both? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I configure my stock scanning tool in Thinkorswim that allows me to find the best new stocks to trade in terms of things like imply volatility and how high or low that might be for the stocks you're looking at, also in terms of liquidity and your risk tolerance as well. And as I kind of mentioned, the information taught in this video is going to be applicable to either option buyers or option sellers. And that's because the stocks that you're trading options on, period, regardless of how you're doing it, those stocks still need to satisfy a few key common characteristics. And those are the exact characteristics that I use to configure my stock scanning tool. Now, as always, before we dive in here, in case you are brand new to the channel, my name is Scott Reese, and I'm here to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And in case you want to see more trading or investing content after watching this video, you can also find me on Skillshare as well, where you can take my very in-depth classes on options trading or stock market investing. And I provided some links to some of the introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. So be sure to check them out. And when you sign up for Skillshare using any of those links, you'll get a full one month free trial. And so with that being said, now we're going to jump on over to Thinkorswim and we'll get things started. Okay, so let's get started here. Now in Thinkorswim, the stock scanner tool is located up here in the scan tab. So we can click on that and here we go. And of course, before I continue here, even though I'm showing you all this stuff in Thinkorswim, if you do not use this platform, then don't worry. Most other stock or option trading platforms do offer a stock scanning tool. And chances are you will also be able to use or plug in the same criteria that I have here as well. And if that's not the case, then perhaps consider switching to Thinkorswim. And so the way this works here is up top, as I just kind of mentioned, these are all the different criteria I have set in place or programmed into my scanner such that once the scanner runs, any stock that appears down below, all these stocks have to meet each one of these criteria. So basically, in other words, these are just filters to remove any stocks you don't want to see. And also, regardless of whether you are selling options or buying options or doing both, each one of these five filters should be relevant for you. And you'll see why in a second. And so the first filter I have has to do with the stock trading volume, which basically looks at how many shares of a particular stock are traded each day. And for this one, I have a minimum set in place of 1 million shares. I don't want to see any stocks that have traded less than 1 million shares in a day. And then the max I have basically left open ended. Now, why is this one important though? The reason is that typically stocks that are very heavily traded, i.e. over 1 million shares in a day, they often also have pretty heavily traded options. And liquidity, very good liquidity specifically, is extremely important in options trading. Right, for example, if we go to the trade tab here and we'll go to, let's say, Snapchat, this is a stock that I trade options on all the time because one, you can see here, with a trading volume, over 17 million shares of Snapchat traded in the last trading day on Friday. And as I said, that typically corresponds to very heavily traded options as well. So for example, these call options expiring in the November expiration cycle in 12 days, just take a look at the volume and the open interest on all these contracts, right? The volume is pretty much in the hundreds or the thousands, and the open interest is always in the thousands or very close to it. So needless to say that the options on Snapchat are extremely heavily traded, and that's important because that translates into very tight bid ask spreads. Right, just take a look at all the prices on these call options. The spreads are always only a few pennies wide. And so that means when you're trading these options, you're going to get filled at very good prices. Right, for example, if you were to sell options on Snapchat, then you would be able to sell those contracts very close to the asking price. And very similar, if you are buying options on Snapchat, you could buy these contracts very close to the bid price. So always, always make sure that when you're trading options or stock, that what you are trading has very good liquidity. You want to see a lot of trading activity with the products that you are trading. So that way it's very easy to get in and out of your trades and also for good prices. That's absolutely crucial. And so with that said, we'll come back to the scanner tab here. My next filter has to do with the market cap of the companies that I'm trading. And so for me, my minimum criteria is I only want to trade companies that have a market cap of at least 1 billion or 1000 million as it's shown here in the scanner tool. And then similar to the stock volume filter on the upside, I don't have any maximum criteria. That's just open-ended. So again, basically only show me companies that have a market cap of at least 1 billion. And this is also important because this is a great way to gauge the stability of the companies that you're trading. 
right? Typically companies with a market cap of over $1 billion or somewhere around there. There's no magic number to this, but still, these kinds of companies are typically very well established. They generate sizable revenue. They have significant market share. Bottom line is these companies are typically not going to go anywhere anytime soon. And that's a good thing because I don't want to trade options on companies that might go bankrupt in the next week. Right, if I'm selling put options on any of these companies or if you're buying call options, then the last thing I want to see is the stock going to zero or getting cut in half or something like that happening. Of course, I do want to see some volatility in the stock price. That's always good for options trading, but I don't want to have to worry about the company not having a future or I don't want to have to worry that the stock's going to do something crazy at any point. So again, that's why I prefer to trade much more well-established companies. This one is a bit more subjective. Obviously, it's possible to trade smaller companies with more risk involved. But again, for me personally, this is just what I look for. Next up with my third filter, this one has to do with the actual price of the stocks I'm trading. So given my account size and the kinds of strategies I like to trade, mostly selling naked options, I'm really only interested in trading stocks with a price between 20 bucks per share and maybe a maximum of 300 bucks per share. Anything below that price or above that price, I'm simply not going to trade. So of course, I don't want to see those stocks in the output of the scanner down here below. And so this one here is also a bit more subjective. It does depend, as I mentioned, on your account size and the kind of strategy that you are using. But this kind of filter is definitely still very important to cut down the final output of the stock scanner. And that's one of the main ways you can actually tune your stock scanner. For example, if the output down here was like 1,000 stocks, I don't want to sit here and scan through 1,000 different companies. So if you are in that situation, then you definitely want to tighten up your criteria, perhaps increase the trading volume of the stock or increase the market cap or make the range of stock prices a bit smaller, whatever you have to do to cut down the final output of the stock scanner. I would say if the final list of stocks you see down here is about one to 200 companies, then you're in pretty good shape. Next up, we have the vol index of the stock. Basically, this one here is specifying a range for the implied volatility for the companies I want to sell options on. And in case you don't know what implied volatility is, I'll explain it very briefly here. So again, I have Snapchat pulled up, but down below this chart in a visual way will show you what the implied volatility is for Snapchat over the past one year. And of the many ways to describe implied volatility, it is simply the expected price range of this stock at some point in the future. And typically by default, that point in the future is one year away. So for example, with Snapchat right now, the implied volatility is at 55.2%. So this means at the current moment, the market is expecting one year from now, Snapchat stock to be up or down by about 55%. And notice how I said up or down by this number, plus or minus 55%, and that's why it gives you an expected price range at some point in the future. And then as you can see, the implied volatility definitely fluctuates based on what's happening in the market and of course what's happening with Snapchat as a company. Sometimes implied volatility can spike, in this case up to 73%, so it's during points like this where there is less certainty about this company going forward and or we expect to see much more volatility with Snapchat, right? Because with an IV of 73%, that means we might see much greater price swings for Snapchat. And we definitely saw that when Snapchat announced their earnings a few days ago and the stock dropped by about 30%. And then now, as you can see, Snapchat is calming down. It's consolidating. So therefore, the future expected price range for the stock, the future expected volatility for Snapchat has come down as well. So simply put, you can think of implied volatility as just the future expected volatility of the stock. And this is very important because implied volatility is baked into the prices of all option contracts. It's a very crucial component. And so ultimately, that's why, coming back to the scanner tab now, that's why I specifically look for implied volatility levels of at least 50%. Although in the scanner tool here, it's called volatility index, but it's the same thing. The reason being is the higher the implied volatility, the greater the option prices will be. That's how the relationship works between implied volatility and option pricing. The greater the IV, the greater the option prices. The lower the IV, the lower the option prices. And so as an option seller, I want to sell very expensive options because that's going to make for the biggest profit potential for me. And then also for this filter, I do have a maximum set in place as well of 200%. This one is not super relevant because you almost never see implied volatilities this high, but, but generally speaking, I would say most of the stocks I trade have implied volatilities of between 50 and maybe 100%. And so this also means if you are buying options, then you typically want to buy cheap options, right? So therefore, you might want to come down a bit on the vault index, maybe to 40% or 30%, but you also don't want to go too low 
some volatility in the stocks you're trading is actually a good thing. And this mostly applies to option buyers because when you're buying option contracts, at some point the stock has to move. It has to move in your favor to make a profit. That's not always the case when you're selling options because you can sell out of the money contracts, in which case the stock can just keep moving sideways and eventually the contract will expire worthless. But again, definitely when you're buying options, you do want to see some volatility in the stock you're trading. So that way you have a decent chance of having the stock move in your favor. That being said, coming down to the final filter I have with IV percentile, this one is also extremely important between option buyers and option sellers. Now, one important thing to note with this filter is that this one is actually misnamed. It should be called IV rank, not IV percentile. Now, these two metrics are very similar, and I'll show you what they are in a second here, but just understand in Thinkorswim, this is a misprint. It should be IV rank. So if we come back to the charts real quick here, and down below in the imply volatility chart, you can see IV rank, 15%, IV percentile, 26%. And then also on the far left, the actual current level of imply volatility for Snapchat is 55%. So this one here, this is the vol index, right, that I showed you earlier. And then these two metrics will show you how relatively high or low the vol index is for Snapchat, right? Because as I showed you, imply volatility definitely fluctuates. And so right now with the IV being about 55%, well, is this relatively high for Snapchat? Is it typically low? How do I know this? And the way you know is by looking at the IV rank or IV percentile. And so very briefly here, if I zoom back out so you can see the full imply volatility chart down below, and so the IV rank indicator will look at the past year of implied volatility and specifically only look at the one year high and also the one year low. And based on those two numbers, the IV rank indicator will tell you where the current level of implied volatility sits in between that high and that low. So right now with the IV rank being only 15%, that means the current level of implied volatility for Snapchat at 55% is definitely on the lower end. It's pretty close to that one year low. And then in a similar fashion, the IV percentile indicator will look at all the past days over the previous one year and show you the percentage of days where the implied volatility is less than where it is right now. So currently only 26% of the previous days over the last 12 months saw an implied volatility less than 55%. So basically both of these indicators here just show you a different way to analyze how relatively high or low the IV is for Snapchat right now. And that's very important because when implied volatility is on the lower end of where it usually is, that's a good opportunity or potentially a good opportunity to buy options. Again, if you do want to buy options at all, you want to buy them when they have their cheapest prices possible. So therefore waiting for moments like this is actually gonna be a good thing if you're buying options. Because also one more characteristic of implied volatility is that it's mean reverting, which means that it likes to fluctuate around a long-term average. And you can definitely see that visually here with Snapchat. Every time implied volatility gets too low, what does it do? It comes back up. And each time implied volatility gets too high, it comes back down. It pretty much just fluctuates around a specific average for the particular stock that you're looking at. So again, when you buy options at this point, or at this point, or even maybe right now, you have a decent chance of seeing implied volatility expand and therefore increasing the prices of the options you just purchased. That's gonna be a good thing for you as an option buyer, right? And then on the flip side with option selling, which is what I do, I want to see implied volatility reach a high point before I step in and sell options. Because at points like this, or like this, or like this, et cetera, those options on Snapchat are going to have high prices. And then when implied volatility finally comes back down, as it usually does, that's going to bring the option prices down along with it. And therefore, I can buy those contracts back for a much lower price than where I sold them and make the difference as a nice profit. So that's why as part of my stock scanner here, I do have a filter based on the IV rank, not percentile again, based on the IV rank of the stocks I'm looking at. So I want to see an IV rank at minimum of 30% and a maximum of 100%, which is also the highest point IV rank can even get to. And then of course, if you're buying options, you might want to set your maximum to 30% and your minimum to perhaps 0%. And then finally, once I have all those filters set in place, I can come down here and click the scan button. And then once it's done, as I showed you a couple times earlier, you can see all the stocks down below that meet your various filters. And right now the output's only showing 113 stocks, so that's pretty good. And then also I can sort this entire list by the IV rank in descending order. So that means the stocks up top here have the greatest implied volatilities, or excuse me, the greatest IV ranks, and therefore, these stocks are the most opportunistic for selling options. 
And so starting from the top, I can simply walk down my list and check each one out and figure out if I do want to step in and sell options on any of these stocks or also add them to my watch list permanently. And so with that being said, that's going to conclude this video. I hope you enjoyed it and please let me know your thoughts or if you have questions in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you want to take some very in-depth classes on options trading or stock market investing, then check out my Skillshare courses. Links in the description of this video. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I drop new videos every single week and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.